Good evening. Welcome to the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education regular meeting of November 13th, 2017. Mr. Senators, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Bonifield. Here. Mrs. Bradford. Here. Mrs. Frank. Here. Mrs. Jarvis. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Sunners is here. President Burden. Here. We have a quorum. Mr. Johnson, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? In my honor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to a very exciting Board of Education meeting. This is one that we look forward to all year long when we get to celebrate our Teachers of the Year. Uh, we have a very full agenda this evening, uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, our agendas, if, you are if you're in our room this evening and you'd like to have a copy of our agenda, they're located just on the table outside the door to your right. Uh, also on that table are uh, blue slips for audience, par or audience communications if anyone chooses to participate in that this evening. If you're watching from home and you'd like an agenda, you can find one on our website. That can be found at www.livoniapublicschools.org. And if you hover over the board tab, you can drop down to the agendas and follow along with our agenda and our information packet that goes along with that for the evening. One of these uh, significant goals that the district is working on this year is respect. And that is intended to go in every direction, from student to student, from adult to adult, and from adults to students. And this board would like it known that we take that very seriously. This board uh, is, we are giving you our commitment that we will treat uh, everybody in this room with respect. And we would like to encourage everybody who is participating this evening to do the same. We find no better way to teach our children than to model it ourselves. This meeting this evening uh, is a regular meeting or what some folks refer to as a voting meeting. Uh, what that means is that the items that are coming before the vote, before the board this evening for a vote, have been discussed at typically at least two prior meetings. Our study session, where we take a first glance at, at many items, and our committee of the whole, where we take a very deep dive and, and have a lot of discussion. Uh, therefore, you may or may not hear the level of discussion on items before we vote on them. Please understand it's not because we're taking anything lightly, but it's because we have, have basically beat these issues up to death in every way in, that we can think of before they get to tonight's meeting. So we may have some questions and answers, but if you're looking for a deeper discussion to, I, about the issues that are coming before the board, I really encourage you to follow along with either attend or watch uh, from TV on, uh, at home, or watch on our website, our Committee of the Whole meetings. Those are the meetings where we go into great depth of discussion. So if you're looking for that, uh, then that's the kind of meeting that you'd like to follow along with. Uh, but tonight we will be voting on, on each item that comes before the board. We also are going to be taking a break after item 3C, after our district update from our superintendent this evening, uh, in order to spend a few minutes uh, of time so that those who are in attendance this evening can congratulate personally our honorees of the evening, who are our teachers of the year. With that, we're going to go ahead and get started with the rest of our meeting. We are now on item 3, communications, and teacher of the year for 2017-2018, and I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Jenkins. Thank you. Good Good evening, President Burton, members of the board, Superintendent Oquist. As you can see from our large crowd this evening um, on hand, this is a very special evening for Livonia Public Schools. Tonight we're celebrating our Teachers of the Year for the 2017-2018 school year. You might say it's our version of the Oscars, or the Grammys, <laughs> or the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductions, personal favorite of mine, um, except our honor honorees aren't they're, they are not rock stars um, on a red carpet, stars on a red carpet, or rock stars on a stage. Uh, they are rock stars in our classrooms, however. They are true stars in the eyes of all whom they whom they serve as educators in our district. But before we place them in the LPS limelight, uh, with all that glitz and glamour associated, I'd like to take a moment to review um, how they came to this point. Uh, to be selected as a Teacher of the Year in a district with nearly 1,000 teachers and more than 14,000 students is quite an honor. Our 13-member uh, Teachers of the Year Committee review the uh, nominations, which come from all around the district, including uh, from parents, from staff, and from students. 
the, nomin uh, the nominees uh, the n then submit their inf informational packets and references are collected for each of the nominees. The selection pro process is often difficult because there are far more excellent teachers in our district than the few that we are honoring uh, than, than we recognize each year. But that list of former Teachers of the Year continues to grow each and every year. Um, with that, at this time, I'd like to ask any former Teachers of the Year in our audience to please stand and be recognized. And we have a few. Thank you for joining us this evening. And now on to our current honorees. <coughs> I'll ask all three to join me at the podium. And uh, with a drum roll, I will now introduce for the 2017-2018 school year, our elementary teacher of the year is Mrs. Elizabeth Kostansky. <laughs> our middle school teacher of the year is Mr. Phil Quackenbush. And our high school teacher of the year is Mrs. Julie Smith. Okay, so come on up. Oh, I don't feel like I'm talking away from you. Um, just for a few moments while I go over a couple things here. Um, as uh, with this honor comes a certain amount of celebrity factor. Um, as LPS Teachers of the Year, they will be recognized on the district's website and our social media channels, in the district's dialogue newsletter, by the Livonia Chamber of Commerce at its annual Leadership and Awards Ceremony, uh, by the Livonia PTSA Council during its Founders Day event, and tonight they are being recognized by some of our lo local elected officials. We have special tri tributes from the state of Michigan and from Wayne County. Uh, I will. This is a special State of Michigan proclamation um, signed by Governor uh, Snyder, Senator Patrick Kolbeck, and State Representative Laura Cox, who has joined us this evening. And if I could ask Representative Cox to help me uh, distribute these tributes. Welcome. Thank you for being here tonight. Well, thank you for having me. This is always a pleasure and an honor to kind of give you all a all the accolades that you deserve on one time, but I think we're going to do it a couple times throughout the year because you get invited to some other events throughout the community from the chamber, et cetera, that I'll see you again, but you won't get the big one that time. <laughs> but I do want to say I want to thank the board for uh, always inviting me and including me and to uh, join in this celebration. It's nice to take a few moments to honor you all for all the hard work you do for our kids and our community, and it really does mean a lot to us. So. You want me just to give it to each of them right now? Sure. Okay. All right, so Elizabeth. Thank you very much. Here's a uh, proclamation. It talks a little bit about what you've done for the kids, and we really appreciate what you've done. Thank you. Uh, I'm saying shake your hand. <laughs> and, um, oh, thank you. Angela's going to try to get a picture. I'm right here. Oh. <laughs> We always appreciate people encouraging music. Mrs. Smith, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Can you just take a quick picture? Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, and then we have a special resolution from Wayne County. Uh, signed by the three county commissioners who cover our uh, district. Uh, county Commissioner Terry Marecki, County Commissioner uh, Diane Webb, who is present with us this evening and will present the uh, <coughs> tributes, and uh, County Commissioner Glenn Anderson. And, uh, Commissioner Marecki ex extends her, uh, her sympathies for not being able to join us uh, this evening. Of course, she would be yeah. here in a minute. Absolutely. And, and Glenn Anderson doesn't represent Livonia anymore, but he still loves you. <laughs> so we still, we still include him. Um, well, I want to say thank you all for allowing me to be a part of this. Um, 
I don't know if I told you this last year, but I started out an education major. I went to Eastern, of course, the school for, for teachers, and um, and then the, the phone company wouldn't pay for that degree, so I had to switch majors. And <laughs> years later, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to go back into that. I'm going to try teaching. So if anybody thinks it's easy, they need to try it because <laughs> you'll get a whole new respect for educators. In middle school educators, a special place in heaven for them. <laughs> so, so I want to say thank you very much, Elizabeth, for the great work you do with thank the little you. ones. And um, this is on behalf of the entire Wayne County Commission, but it's signed by the three that worked in your district. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Krakenbush, I think I remember you around Emerson when my son was there. God bless you. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's almost 17 now and much better. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, the county commission. Thank you, and and Julie over at Franklin. Thank you so much, Julie, for everything you do with those high school kids. And I hope they know that you know more than them. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thank you for Thanks allowing for being me here. Today. You want to take a second to set those down, maybe, because yeah. I have more loot for you. <laughs> While they take a moment, I'm going to go ahead and ask for a motion. May I have a motion on this item, please? President Burton. Mrs. Frank. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt resolutions for the 2017-2018 Teachers of the Year. Elizabeth. Oh. We'll get you in just a second. Okay. Elizabeth Gostomsky from Kennedy, Kennedy Elementary, Phil Quackenbush from Emerson Middle School, and Julie Smith from Franklin High School. <laughs> we have a motion by Mrs. Frank, supported by, by Mr. Johnson. I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you. Uh, now it's my turn to shower them with gifts. Um, first off, I'm not sure if you had the chance to notice uh, our plaque has been updated in the lobby upstairs uh, to reflect each of each of our teachers of the year for this year. Uh, that perennial plaque goes back to 1982, I believe. So it's it's quite a tradition in our district. Uh, next, we have some um, awesome and quite heavy golden apples that are engraved that I'll present to each of you. I'll just grab one out real quick. And also a uh, Teacher of the Year pin. Nice. I'm just going to show everyone these apples. They're amazing. <gasps> oh, oh, nice. nice. Mm. They're very heavy, too. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, we've assembled, um, this is the fun part, I've assembled some uh, pretty cool gift bags for you, filled with gift certificates uh, from the following uh, donors. These, these bags are filled with um, certificates uh, from uh, Wayne County Commissioner Terry Marecki's office donated Tiger baseball tickets. Oh. So that's two tickets. And County Commissioner Diane Webb's office also donated two Tiger tickets. Their sections are happen to be near each other, so you can coordinate with their offices. There's certificates in the bag that gives you some instructions. And you can uh, do two in, her, in each section and if party of four if you wish um, let's see we also have uh, gift cards from uh, to Las Palapas restaurant which is very good they donate every year we we love Las Palapas um, also a gift card from uh, to Rusty Bucket uh, the Haggerty and Seven Mile location uh, Georgia's Senate on Haggerty you're in the mood for a good Coney Island uh, Livonia Parks and Recreation this year donated a uh, nine hole uh, I hope you're golfers. If not, you give them away. I won't be offended. Um, nine holes of golf for two at one of our city courses. Uh, the Livonia Symphony Orchestra has donated tickets to the remaining performances of this season, which is phenomenal. Um, a gift card to Barnes and, Ro Barnes and Noble, 
every teacher's favorite store, I think. And um, some power cards to Dave and Buster's. <laughs> so um, we also held a reception earlier um, up in the superintendent's office in the front lobby area. And we'd like to thank Big B Coffee on Seven Mile in Farmington for donating the coffee for our reception tonight. That was very nice as well. Um, okay, so at this time I'll have um, Phil and Ju Julie, you can take your seats. And I'm going to keep Elizabeth up here. Um, if you want to set your stuff up, it's fine. Now I'd like to tell you about our Teachers of the Year. So sit back and enjoy the wonderful stories about these very special teachers. We'll start off with Mrs. Elizabeth Gostomsky, who is a second grade teacher at Kennedy Elementary. And at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Board Trustee Liz Jarvis to join us at the podium. And uh, we've prepared this special resolution from our school district to you as, as part of your tributes this evening. And Mrs. Jarvis will read the, the uh, resolution. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Great name. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the trustees of the Board of Education are desirous of recognizing and promoting excellence in education in this school district. And whereas Elizabeth Gostomsky, a second grade teacher at Kennedy Elementary and an eight year employee of Livonia Public Schools, has distinguished herself by being named Elementary Teacher of the Year for 2017 2018 by a district wide committee of teachers parents and administrators and whereas in achieving that recognition it is evident that she is an exceptional educator going far beyond the expected range of her duties to meet the needs of students colleagues parents and others and whereas Elizabeth believes all students can learn if they feel safe comfortable respected and supported Tenets that she practices and models each day for her students through the use of creative lessons, classroom environment features, and personal relationships that she builds with her students. Now therefore, be it resolved that the trustees of the Board of Education do hereby commend and congratulate Elizabeth Kostomsky for being named Elementary Teacher of the Year 2017-2018 and for the dedication and loyal service that she has rendered to Livonia Public Schools, her students, and the community. Congratulations. I'd just like to add as well that Elizabeth has a long history uh, within Livonia Public Schools being not only a graduate, but also starting to ensure our future enrollment. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Jarvis. Okay, now it's my turn to brag about you a little bit. Um, Elizabeth Kostomsky is a, pro as we just heard, is a product of Livonia Public Schools um, and is a graduate of Central Michigan University, where she earned a bachelor's degree in elementary education and in, uh, in cognitive impairments. Uh, she also earned a master's degree in learning disabilities from Madonna University. Her educational background contributes to the inclusive classroom environment she has created for her students of all abilities in her general education set setting at Kennedy Elementary. For um, a few brief examples show this. First, there is a place within the classroom called Alaska. <laughs> hmm, what could this mean? When a student becomes frustrated or upset, he or she can cool down in a little spot called Alaska in, the cor in, in a space in the room on a little carpet square, I assume, um, and sit quietly until he or she can rejoin the group. Her classroom also has, a bra uh, has braille labels that accompany signs and labels so that any student with uh, visual impairments may have the same ability to interact with the classroom as his or her peers. Uh, Mrs. Gostomsky, who is uh, versed in American Sign Language, teaches her students silent hand signals so that if they need to use the restroom, get a drink of water, 
we know that those requests come often um, they do not need to um, they can do so silently without interrupting a lesson or disturbing quiet time a third example is the alternative seating mrs. Gostomsky has in her classroom it's not unusual to walk into her room and see students sitting on yoga mats working at a countertop bouncing on a yoga ball or sitting on wiggle stools all while engaged in their learning each of these examples tie into Elizabeth's teaching philosophy that all students are capable of learning and of being members of the classroom community. Her classroom is a place where the expectation is the same for all students, that they will work hard and do their very best. In doing these things, Elizabeth has created an environment in which students feel safe and respected regardless of ability. They feel comfortable sharing about themselves and trying new things. This has not gone unnoticed by her second graders. In fact, one student, I think this was maybe last year or the year before, two years ago, uh, proclaimed January 26th as being International Miss Terbiak Appreciation Day, <laughs> Terbiak being, being her maiden name. This adorable proclamation thanked her for doing so much for the students and for making second grade rock. Elizabeth was nominated for Teacher of the Year by a, a former parent, uh, uh, Mrs. Clark, Kara Clark, who states that Mrs. Gostomsky is a quote one in a million teacher. She stated that the uh, she communicates well with students and parents, seeks and is open to the latest technology for her students, and is someone who is willing to step out of her com comfort zone to do what is best for her students. She was also nominated by Christine Fankel, who is a curriculum coordinator for the district. Christine writes that she first met Elizabeth as a third grade student at Webster Elementary. Aww. As you know, Webster houses our elementary gifted and talented program as well as a comprehensive special education program. The two student populations often have the opportunity to interact with one another. Christine recalls that Elizabeth, as a student, would enthusiastically participate in activities that fostered positive relationships between the two programs. Fast forward, uh, Christine notes that Elizabeth continues to stretch and grow as an ed educator and as a mentor. Elizabeth is known for pil piloting programs and trying new things to improve instruction and learning. Her classroom door is always open to teachers who wish to observe a particular lesson. In fact, she has contributed on numerous occasions to the professional development of teachers both inside and outside of the district. Her involvement at Kennedy includes working with the Student Lighthouse team and other Leader in Me activities, sharing her classroom with her colleagues, holding second grade meetings with students and, and her colleagues, uh, working on the Achievement team, and more. Her principal, Dr. Danielle Daniels, said, quote, she is a teacher who leads by example. From the lunchroom to the parking lot to helping lead an assembly, Elizabeth is there. Dr. Daniels calls her creative, engaged, dependable, a true leader who is compassionate and intelligent. As her teaching partner, Ms. Um, Ms. Jackie Banner had a lot to say. <laughs> she really did about her colleagues. She describes Elizabeth as being detail driven, a multitasker extraordinaire, a confident leader, an excellent listener, great communicator, a lifelong learner, a collaborator and supporter. It was just part of what she had to say. <laughs> she also said Elizabeth has a sense of humor and a warm, welcoming demeanor. Jackie said, quote, I am a better teacher having learned so much from her. Dr. Daniels summed up her endorsement by saying, quote, Elizabeth is highly motivated and engaged in making a difference in the field of education and then in the lives of children. And with that, I'd like to offer a round of applause for Mrs. <laughs> I'm going to guess that she has a few words to say. <laughs> Take it away. Thank you. Well, this is quite quite an honor. Um, for most of my life, I've known that I've wanted to be a teacher, except for maybe a couple short years in elementary school, where if you'd asked anyone, they would tell you that I was going to be the first female president of the United States. <laughs> but um, I've been very, very fortunate to have so many people in my life who have helped to reaffirm my dream of becoming a teacher and have helped shape me into the teacher that I am today. And I truly feel that they're just as deserving 
as um, being a part of this honor as much as I am. Um, my first teachers, my parents, um, my dad, who taught me the value of doing hard work and doing a job that you truly love, having something to look forward to going to every day. And my mom, who was my first role model as a teacher, and she taught me that every child is capable of learning and deserving of an education. Um, my sisters, who let me spend countless hours in our basement uh, classroom that I created, <laughs> teaching them whatever lesson I had learned that day at school. Um, my sisters probably learned fractions a lot sooner than what they should have. <laughs> um, and they also gave me my very first taste in uh, classroom management. <laughs> um, I, uh, as it was said, I went to school at Webster, where I was very fortunate to be able to take uh, part in not only the ACAP program, but to participate in a lot of activities with the MOCAI program as well. And I believe that's where I got my first um, kind of really drive to want to be a teacher of um, students with special needs. And I had a lot of fantastic teachers at Webster, two of them who are here tonight, Mrs. Finkel and Mrs. Freilich. Um, in fact, when I first became a teacher my first year, I went back to Webster and I ran into Mrs. Freilich in the coffee room and uh, she was congratulating me, and I said, oh, hi, Mrs. Freilich. And she goes, oh, no, you can call me Sue now. We're <laughs> colleagues. And I go, I can't do that. <laughs> You're my teacher. Um, but also, my fifth and sixth grade teacher, Terry Masick, who's not here tonight, um, who made learning and just her lessons so much fun and so engaging that I still remember so many of them today and um, just have so many memories of trying to make root beer in her classroom or creating the Marsville habitats that we did. Um, in high school, I was a part of the global education program, and there were so many teachers within that program who really um, touched me and showed me um, how I could maybe even apply what I'm learning in the classroom to um, service outside of the classroom, um, especially Judy Brzezowski, who, with her global perspective on education, um, as well as all the other teachers' perspective on education, I really try to emulate that in my classroom, even with the little ones. Um, my husband, who's very patient on the nights that I spend grading or I'm at school, and who listens to me tell the stories and share the accomplishments of my students, and who will get just as excited and celebrates with me as I celebrate their accomplishments. Um, very fortunate to work in a building um, at Kennedy with a bunch of fantastic educators who, who have just helped me to grow as a teacher so much. Um, I work with two fantastic women, Jane Katsaros and Jackie Banner, who are my second grade team. And the collaboration among us has allowed me to really um, try new things. We bounce ideas off each other. And their excitement gets me excited. And they truly show me that education is always changing. I don't think we do anything ever the same way ever once. It always changes each and every year. Um, and just all the other people there, the opportunities I've been provided has just been fantastic. And then finally my students, my past students, my current students, and the students that I'll have in the future, they shape me as much as an educator as anyone else. Um, I became a teacher because I wanted to be able to have an impact on people. And I feel I really get a chance to do that within the classroom. Uh, just the same way that so many other teachers had that impact on me. And these students continue to drive me to become a lifelong learner and to share my love of learning with them as I find new ways to teach them and to engage them. I, I want to thank you for this honor. I'm very thrilled to be the Elementary Teacher of the Year. So thank you. I'd like to introduce you to another highly skilled teacher in our district, Mr. Phil Beckenbush. If you could join me at the podium. Hello. <coughs> Mr. Quackenbush, and I have to call him Mr. Quackenbush because um, my student, my son is a current student. <laughs> so it kind of seems strange not to call him Mr. Quackenbush. Okay. Um, okay, so. I think it's been mentioned already, but Mr. Quackenbush teaches 7th and 8th grade uh, band and orchestra at Emerson Middle School. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Trustee Crystal Frank to the podium to read the special resolution we have drafted.
resolution. Whereas, the trustees of the Board of Education are desirous of recognizing and promoting excellence in education in this school district. And, whereas, Philip Quackenbush, a band and orchestra teacher at Emerson Middle School and a 15-year employee of Livonia Public Schools, has distinguished himself by being named Middle School Teacher of the Year for 2017-2018 by a district-wide committee of teachers, parents, and administrators. Whereas, in achieving this recognition, it is evident that he is an exceptional educator, going far beyond the expected range of duties to meet the needs of students, colleagues, parents, and others. Whereas, Philip believes students benefit greatly academically, physically, and emotionally when exposed to music education, as he carries out this belief through consistent professional instruction and genuine care and concern for his students. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the trustees of the Board of Education do hereby command and congratulate, commend and congratulate Philip Quackenbush for being named Middle School Teacher of the Year for 2017-2018 and for the dedication and loyal service he has rendered to the Livonia Public Schools, his students, and the community. Congratulations. Thank you, Trustee Frank. Okay. I do have you in here as your first name, so I'll just go with that. <laughs> okay? Okay, me too. Um, Phil is a product of Livonia Public Schools, and he went on to earn his bachelor's degree in music and a master's degree in liberal studies from Eastern Michigan University. He was nominated by student Gabriel Serta, who calls Mr. Quackenbush, quote, humorous, thoughtful, empathetic, and polite. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was cute. When we say that Mr. Quackenbush teaches seventh and eighth grade band and orchestra, this means he is preparing approximately 170 12 and 13 year old students, <laughs> preparing them for more than 10 performances in the school and, and in the community each school year. In addition, he has been known to teach students who have special needs and have shown an interest in music. It doesn't end there. Mr. Quackenbush offers after school help sessions for students who need extra instruction or additional practice for the solo and ensemble competitions. Festival, known as festival, I believe, correct? Um, he often coordinates with a few of the um, of his for former students who are now in high school. He has them come and uh, work with the students after school. This, uh, building this middle school to high school connection has proven to be a great thing for many who continue on uh, with their instrument in high school. Bill is a member of the Michigan School uh, band and Orchestra Association, and he has served on uh, district uh, committees to rewrite the LPS elementary and secondary curricula, music curricula. He also served on the Music Equipment Committee and the Building Renovation Com Committee. He's a member of the Emerson Staff Advisory Committee and has been um, an instructor for his colleagues during professional development sessions. He takes great pride in teaching music to students because he knows he is teaching the whole child. He knows he is helping his students be better, better readers, thinkers, and listeners who are doing math while analyzing musical patterns. They're learning words in foreign languages while reading terms of musical expression. They're making um, an individual effort while playing on a team. And they are aware of their physical states by practicing good posture and breathing techniques. In recent years, Mr. Quackenbush reflected upon his own experiences as a fifth grade music student in Livonia Public Schools, a time when uh, all students were loaned instruments free of charge by the district before the, their families, our families would consider uh, purchasing an instrument. Well, buying instruments back then was a lot more affordable than it is now. This is why uh, he f helped form a partnership with two wonderful community organizations, the Livonia Symphony Orchestra and Livonia Kids and Families. Together, they held instrument drives and paid to refurbish used instruments that can now be loaned to students in our music programs within the Franklin Triad. What a wonderful partnership and show of support. Members of the LSO also donated their time to conduct educational workshops in our schools. 
uh, Ms. Rose Kechnowski, president of the Livonia Symphony Orchestra, who is in the audience, I believe I saw her earlier. Thank you for being with us <laughs> on this side. Hello there. Um, she had this to say about Mr. Quackenbush. Quote, he is a total professional beyond all expectations. I found Mr. Quackenbush to be a, a delight to work with. He definitely has a very, a very apparent love of music and he cares for his students. Music teacher and colleagues, uh, Teresa Sirahall, said Mr. Quackenbush is humble, kind, and always goes the extra mile to help his students succeed. His former students return uh, to help his program grow and develop, and that says a lot about his character and the relationships with his students. Emerson Middle School principal Ann Owen said those relationships, not only with students but with parents and staff, is reflected in the high level of, en of enrollment in the Emerson Music Program. In fact, um, he may have a record-breaking uh, seventh grade orchestra this year. Is that right? Um, Mrs. Owen notes that nearly 100% of seventh graders continue on with orchestra in eighth grade. She said, quote, his ability to attract and retain string students is a point of pride for our building. And it has been noted that most students move on to play in the orchestra at Franklin. Mrs. Sarah Hall and her, uh, said her orchestra students were always well prepared after coming from Emerson. She said, quote, we always had 95 to 100 percent retention between middle and high school in the orchestra program. This is extremely high and it is because the, because the students had such a wonderful experience in their middle school that they wanted to continue on. That is the largest compliment any music teacher could help, hope for. And with that, we'd love to hear from Mr. Quackenbush right after we give him a round of applause. <laughs> Anyone who's ever sat in my classroom before or been to one of my concerts knows that I tend to ramble. So <laughs> I, I wrote things down to try and keep it a little, a little bit short and sweet. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the Teacher of the Year Committee for selecting me for this distinction. I, I am truly honored to have been selected. Um, I'd also like to thank my colleagues and my family, my wife, uh, for the support that they show me every day. Um, a lot of what I was going to talk about is uh, things that you heard uh, uh, Stacy saying just a moment ago um, but I really want to stress that so much of it is about not me working with the community but the community reaching out to Emerson um, so much of what we've been able to do at Emerson is because the community is so supportive I didn't go to the LSO the Livonia Symphony and ask them for help they asked for a meeting with us they asked us what they could do to support Emerson Music. Uh, Livonia Kids and Family, that, that was uh, Chuck Dardis and his team reaching out to Emerson and asking, what can we do for the music program? And I am always very happy to accept that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't misunderstand me. But um, the Livonia Symphony, they got the grant, which allowed them to refurbish all those instruments when they did that, um, when they did that instrument drive. And it was members of the community who went into their closets and into their attics and into their garage spaces, heated garage spaces, <laughs> um, and pulled out all those instruments and donated them. And then it was the Livonia Symphony that sent them to different uh, music repair vendors and got them fixed for us, and then sent them to Emerson and to Cooper. It's uh, Livonia Kids and Family that the beginning of the last few years has emailed and asked, what do you need? What can we provide for you? make sure that every kid has an instrument because I came to Emerson after teaching at the elementary school and I came in uh, I started Emerson in September of 2008 and you might remember just a few months after September of 2008 there was a pretty big economic uh, hardship that hit the entire country and numbers in the music program just plummeted because families could no, no longer afford to rent instruments as freely as they could as they could in the past. And while we saw some increase in that, it just it was never where it had been. Um, part of that's just due to natural enrollment decline, but the financial situation really hit our triad hard. And uh, it's been the, the outreach of the Livonia Symphony, the outreach of Livonia Kids and Family, 
and honestly community members just coming in every year we get family members or uh, former parents of former students who come and say you know my child's at college now just never plays a saxophone anymore take it please do what you can with it make sure a kid gets it and plays with it um, it's been wonderful and that's their outreach the kids who come to tutor my students the Franklin uh, students who come I seldom reach out to them they just show up Mondays after school band kids show up Wednesdays after school orchestra kids show up they want to tutor my students and help them and show them that there's a place for them at Franklin when they get there I received an email today from one of my former trombone players who said hey if you have any trombone players who are playing um, I'd like to be there next Monday so let them know that I'll be there to tutor them if they want any help and he followed up with the ominous if you don't respond I'm showing up <laughs> so just, just just letting me know that you know, uh, he, he's, he's gonna be there and great kid though he's, he's welcome in any in any in any way um, but that's the kids that's not me that's the kids um, and of course we've gotten so much help in the last few years from the community when they passed the fine arts bond mm -hmm. the performing arts centers are wonderful and the changes that were made to my room are just amazing I still remember when Emerson was renovated and I had my eighth graders in there who had played in the seventh graders previously and I had a flute player sitting in the first row we had just finished warming up for the first time first day back with our instruments a flute player turns to me and she says, Mr. Quackenbush, I heard the trombones. <laughs> I've never heard the trombones before. You always told us last year, listen to the bass line, listen to the trombones. I, we always said we did, but I, I never heard them. <laughs> you know, because kids tell you what, what you know, what, what you want to hear. But for the first time, they were in a room that had adequate musical dampening that they weren't just hearing the echoes of their own sound and their own section around them all the time. So and that, that's, I can't stress enough how much that community support has done for us. And instruments. Um, most of the instruments that have been donated to, to us, most of them have been uh, flutes, clarinets, violins, violas. But for the big instruments, the tubas, the baritone horns, the, uh, the cellos and the basses, we've had a couple of uh, good basses donated to us, but for the most part, that's been coming from the community, from the bond. Now, I don't have kids shying away from playing the bass or playing the cello. It, it, it used to be I might get two or three kids playing the cello and no one who wanted to play the bass because they had to transport the instruments. And you can't carry a bass on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> and carrying a cello, I mean, that takes up the entire seat next to you. And it, it, was, it was a hardship for them. And they're also very expensive instruments. Uh, you can't rent a tuba at all. Now we have those things. And that's because of the community. So I, in my, uh, my younger orchestra now, I have three bass players and five cello players. And the year previous, I had three bass players and five cello players. And that's because of the instruments that we have gotten as a result of the bond. So I, I just, you know, everything you heard Stacy say about, about community outreach, that's not, I'm more of a liaison on that. I, <laughs> It's, it's everything that you do for Emerson, that the community does for Emerson, that the charities do for Emerson, that the kids do when they come back to Emerson. That, that is what has really done the most to support our program and to help us. But on all of their behalf, I'm still very happy to accept the recognition <laughs> teacher of the year. So thank you very much. And certainly not least, I'd like to introduce to you Mrs. Julie Smith. <laughs> Mrs. Smith is a French teacher at Franklin High School. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite Trustee Karen Bradford to the po uh, podium to read the special resolution. Where is? 
says the trustees of the Board of Education are desirous of recognizing and promoting excellence in education in this school district. And whereas Julie Smith, a French teacher at Franklin High School and a 21-year employee of Livonia Public Schools, has distinguished herself by being named High School Teacher of the Year for 2017-2018 by a district-wide committee of teachers, parents, and administrators. And whereas in achieving that recognition, it is evident that she is an exceptional educator going far beyond the expected range of her duties to meet the needs <coughs> of students, colleagues, parents, and others. And whereas Julie believes in creating a fun, engaging, and caring environment in which her students feel comfortable, safe, connected to the lessons, and are excited about learning everything they can about the French language and culture. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the trustees of the Board of Education do hereby commend and congratulate Julie Smith for being named High School Teacher of the Year for 2017-2018 and for the dedication and loyal service she has rendered to the Livonia Public Schools, her students, and the community. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to read it in French. I was French. thinking about it, but then I thought, oh, no, I don't want to show her up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Brad. Okay. Ready? Ready. Okay. Uh, Julie Smith graduated uh, from the University of Michigan, Dearborn, with her bachelor's degree and earned her master's degree from Mary Grove College. Mrs. Smith has taught all levels of French during her 21 years at Franklin, sometimes even teaching two different levels in one class period, if you can imagine that. Uh, she is known for her professionalism, but, also, uh, but she has also been voted most spirited numerous times, most spirited staff member <laughs> numerous times. She isn't afraid to show her school spirit, especially when it comes to spirit week around homecoming. Uh, we're certain that the students enjoyed the year, that she was a very good sport, I presume, um, even when a pie was headed straight for her face. <laughs> um, I, yes, I have my ways. Um, and this was uh, during a, probably a homecoming, I believe. Was, yes, okay. Um, Julie is a mentor teacher and has been a longtime chair of the World Language Department at Franklin. She serves on the faculty council she is a presenter at the 8th grade incoming freshman night and serves often as a senior class guest chaperone at prom. She also volunteers each year at commencements and she is one of those soothing voices you hear who read the graduates' names so eloquently throughout the commencement ceremonies from the podium. She is a uh, co-chair of the Senior Honors Night, which is a very special night uh, evening for our students and our families. Uh, she calls this a labor of love and so rewarding. Outside of Franklin, Mrs. Smith has served on the team that restructured the World Language Department in the district uh, just prior to World Language um, becoming a, a graduation requirement. She worked on a common assessment uh, committee for the district and was on the team that designed the district's approach to uh, teacher evaluations. She also served on the textbook adoption committee. Basically, if there, is, if there is an LPS committee uh, related to world language, she serves on it. Uh, reaching far, very far, outside of the classroom and the district, Mrs. Smith has organized and carried out nine trips, is that correct, nine? So far, nine trips to, uh, to French-speaking areas over her uh, the past 21 years at Franklin. She does this extra credit. So her students may apply what they've learned in the class to the real French-speaking world. She has taken groups to France and to Quebec, Canada. She noted, she noted that watching her students' faces light up when they understand the language in its native area or when they see the uh, Eiffel Tower for the first time makes it all worthwhile. So let's get back to the classroom here in Livonia, Michigan, where Mrs. Smith carries out her teaching duties with enthusiasm, fairness, respect, and a genuine care and concern for her students' well-being. Because she has her French students for consecutive years, she has the opportunity to bond with them and create a family within the classroom. 
It's not uncommon to see current and former students hanging out in her classroom before and after school. She's been named the most influential most influential teacher six times during the Livonia PTSA Council Founders Day event. Colleague Jen, Jen Barker, who has worked with Mrs. Smith for 11 years, uh, notes that many students want to carry on with French all four years of high school, which goes well beyond the graduation requirement. Ms. Barker said that this is because Julie is consistently looking for ways to improve what she does in the classroom, engage students in new and innovative uh, in new and innovative ways, and she holds uh, true to the expectations she sets for both herself and for her students. Ms. Barker said, and I quote, there isn't a week that goes by that she isn't fine-tuning what she does, engaging her students to the fullest and helping them to love French as much as she does. She noted that Mrs. Smith is often viewed by her students as their school mom, and that <laughs> says a lot. Assistant Principal John DePonio said Julie is able to connect with students of all educational and motivational levels. He said, as soon as students walk into her room, they feel welcome and invited. She makes all students feel comfortable, and she also makes them feel like they can be successful. Ms. Barker notes that Julie is quite humble, saying she doesn't do what she does for others to notice. Everything she does is because she loves French, she loves teaching French, and she loves watching kids discover a love for her own personal passion. And she loves impacting students' lives. In closing, I truly love how uh, Principal Mr. Willenborg uh, summarizes Mrs. Mrs. Smith and her impact on students and staff at Franklin High School. He said, and we all know he's, he's quite known for his fantastic quotes and uh, <laughs> fantastic speeches as well. So I just love this. I took it word for word. Um, the French expression for the very best of the best is creme de la creme. The English transition, uh, translation for the best of the best is Miss Julie Smith. Aww. He goes on to say, it gets better. <laughs> Ms. Smith is a consummate professional in her style and in her instructional skills. Her forte, of course, is the passion and, and, and enthusiasm she shares with her students. And she is a master of making learning an exciting adventure. She possesses zeal and inspires her students to live the French language. Her students absolutely adore her, and many have shared her name as their favorite and most influential teacher. She is our very own Notre Dame, the Palace of Versailles, and the Eiffel Tower, all rolled into one. Aww. And with that, I would, offer, I would welcome a round of applause for Mrs. Smith. invite you to say a few words. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for that unbelievable introduction, and congratulations to Elizabeth and Phil as well. It is a privilege to be honored with both of you. There are so many people to thank for helping me to get where I am today. Certainly, my parents have provided nothing but constant love and support as they were the very first teachers in my life. I am so grateful for them. Thank you to so many wonderful colleagues and friends throughout the district, including retired LPS teacher and former Teacher of the Year, Lynn Masucci, for being my mentor and confidant for so many years at Franklin, and to Jen Barker for being my person. I know you know what that means, and I could say thank you a million times over, and that wouldn't begin to express my gratitude. Thank you to the person who nominated me for this honor. Although you don't know that I know it was you, this award <laughs> is that much more special because you nominated me. And of course, a huge thank you to my daughters, Kennedy and Avery, and to my husband, Ron. <laughs> Having teenagers at home certainly provides a different perspective of how adolescents function, how they deal with the highs and lows of their lives, and even how they perceive school in general. I've learned so much from them, and I believe I am a more compassionate teacher because of them. They fill my heart with joy, which I bring along with me to work each day. And to my husband, Ron, you've lived every single day of school right along with me, providing advice and loving support for 20 years. If only you ever helped grade papers or write lesson plans, <laughs> I'd have you right here next to me receiving the award, too. Just kidding. I would not be here right now if it weren't for you, and I am so thankful. I could go on and on naming names one by one, all of the people from whom I've learned so much, but perhaps my biggest debt of gratitude should go to the thousands of students whom I've had the privilege of teaching. It's those kids, my little pumpkins, 
They're the reason why I'm so excited to go to work each day. They provide so much happiness, and I love that I get to play a part in their lives. When Franklin's principal, Dan Willenborg, and student activities director, Jenna Sparza, devised their sneaky plan of how to reveal to me that I was chosen for teacher of the year, they knew right what to do and who should be present on that day. I was shocked to see my husband there. That was a terrific surprise. But seeing an auditorium full of my students, that made the moment extra special. I think of that day often, and the entire event was perfect. Thank you for orchestrating such a marvelous surprise. I am so fortunate to be able to share my passion for the French language and culture with these kids and help them expand their view of the world, both with language and with comprehension that different cultures do things differently. They learn to accept differences rather than judge them, and I am hopeful that the students carry these values throughout their lifetimes. There is no experience more gratifying than watching my students when we travel abroad. Along with my friend, Churchill High School French teacher Angela Jenkins, I've taken students to Quebec and to France nine times with our next trip planned for this June. These trips are truly life-changing for the kids and for me. There is nothing more priceless than watching the students literally cry when they see the Eiffel Tower for the first time in person, or when they can't wait to tell me about how suc they successfully ordered their own meal all in French. <laughs> These experiences give the students so much confidence in themselves, which expands um, far beyond the walls of our classroom. And I'm so appreci appreciative to the parents of these students who instill their trust in me to take their precious kids on such adventures. While I absolutely love everything that there is to teach about French, there is little that compares to the personal relationships that develop with the kids. I love seeing all those empty desks in the morning slowly fill up with current and former students who just want to chat with me before school starts. I love that they trust me enough to share their trials and tribulations and to ask for motherly advice. Because I am fortunate enough to have my French students year after year, we develop such a bond that the kids often call their classmates and me their family. Unfortunately, a couple of my students recently lost their own mothers to illnesses, and I feel privileged that they come to me for help and support that they would have otherwise gotten from their own moms. I love that classroom number 403 is like a second home for so many. There is no other profession that I could even imagine myself doing. Is the job difficult? Yes. Are there some days that are extremely trying? Of course. But there is nothing more fulfilling and rewarding than teaching. I know that I was made for this job. It is my duty to teach these wonderful kids something that I so deeply adore, to show them love and respect, and to give them the positive reinforcement and guidance that they long for, and to be an example of how they too can grow up and have a career that they love. I take this job seriously, and I am ever grateful to the district for hiring me and for entrusting me to take care of these students. Thank you so much for this honor. Are there questions or comments from members of the board? Wow. Okay. Yes, wow. Fabulous. Yes. Congratulations on behalf of the board to all three of our Teachers of the Year this year. It is absolutely our honor to share this evening with you. And we thank the many members of our audience who came to share in the joy and the celebration of these, the accomplishments of these three individuals. Uh, right now, the Board of Education has a motion uh, by Mrs. Frank, supported by, Ms., uh, by Mr. Johnson. Mr. Senators, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Frank. Support. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Center says yes. President Burden. Yes. Motion passes. Congratulations. <laughs> the next item on our agenda is item 3B, American Education Week. May I have a motion, please? Uh, <clears throat> President Burden. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District designate November 13th through 17th, 2017 is the 96th annual observance of American Education Week. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Centers, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Mrs. Jenkins. Thank you, President Burton. Each year, our district, like those across the U.S., recognize American Education Week, which is designated this year for um, the week, this week, November 13th through 17th. 
This is the 96th annual observance of American Education Week. And uh, what an appropriate time to publicly, publicly recognize all of our teachers as we have honored just a few of our brightest and best here tonight. There is quite a bit of history, of history behind American Education Week, so I'll briefly show, share a little bit about how it originated. It's kind of interesting. Back in 1919, the National Education Association was distressed that 25% of the nation's World War I draftees were Ill illiterate and 9% were physically unfit. The NEA teamed up with the, the American Legion to seek ways to generate support for education. In 1921, the NEA assembly in Des Moines, Iowa, a de uh, during a d this assembly, a designation was created to recognize one week each year to spotlight education, calling for an, an educational week observed in all communities annually for the purpose of informing the public of the accomplishments and needs of the public schools and to secure the cooperation and support of the public in meeting those needs. Before too long, the, uh, uh, the observance was co-sponsored by the U.S. Office of Education, the National PTA, the American Legion Auxiliary, Auxiliary and a whole host of other organizations. Mm -hmm. The tradition cont continues today, and the resolution before you describes in detail the rationale for com uh, commemorating American Education Week each year in our country, our state, and in Livonia Public Schools. I invite the board, about, uh, the board to read the resolution before you and to vote uh, formally to place it on the record. And as we do so, we encourage our entire community to take a moment to thank our local educators for the very important work that they do for our future. Thank you. Mr. Senators, would you read the resolution for us? Absolutely. Whereas public schools are the backbone of our democracy, providing young people with the tools they need to maintain our nation's precious values of freedom, civility, and equality. And whereas, by equipping young Americans with both practical skills and broader intellectual, intellectual abilities, schools give them hope for and access to a productive future. And whereas, public education employees work tirelessly to serve our children and communities with care and professionalism, and whereas schools unite entire communities, bringing together adults and children, educators and volunteers, business leaders and elected officials in a common purpose. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the trustees of the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District do hereby proclaim November 13th through 17th, 2017 is the 96th annual observance of American Education Week and urge all citizens to make a commitment to public education and to, for, and to the future of our children. Be it further resolved that the trustees of Livonia Public Schools Board of Education take this special occasion to thank Livonia Public Schools employees, parents, and community volunteers for the work they do to educate and support the children of our school district. Thank you. Are there comments or questions by our superintendent or members of our board? Mrs. Okus? Thank you, President Burton. Thank you, Mrs. Jenkins, for bringing that forward to us and trust, uh, Secretary Centers for reading it. In honor of American Education Week, we proudly um, proclaim that there is no greater benefit to society and no greater commitment to the common good than growing and developing a well-educated populace, which is what our educators, our volunteers, and our school community does on a daily basis. So tonight, we proudly shine a beacon of light, of pride for our public education, and especially for each and every member of our school community who gives tirelessly to our students and to our school community. So to all of our LPS staff, our Board of Education, and our volunteers, we owe you a debt of gratitude and we honor you this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Comments from any other members of the board? Mr. Centers? Uh, we, we spend so much time uh, <laughs> reflecting on the accomplishments of our students. And uh, every meeting, we get to see some great things that students do. But we know that they wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the bus drivers that picked them up, 
the teachers that taught them, the paraprofessionals that helped out, the people in our schools that fed them and cleaned the buildings, so on and so on. Uh, these are really special people who work really, really hard and uh, often don't get the, the thanks they deserve. So uh, it's a very special week for us to be able to say thank you. Thank you. Comments from any other uh, members of the board? Amen to what Mr. Center said. <laughs> you have the gratitude of the entire Board of Education, and uh, the folks in this room are, are obviously, we're, we're preaching to the choir really right here because we're, we're speaking to a room of educators and those folks who love and support educators. Thank you for your contributions to our community. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Centers, supported by, by Mrs. Jarvis. Uh, Mr. Centers, would you please take the roll? Mr. Centers says yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Frank? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. President Burden? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 3C, district update from the superintendent. And after this update, we will be taking a five to ten minute break so that we can congratulate our honorees of the evening. Mrs. Oakwist. Thank you, President Burton. What a great night it is this evening. We're so happy to have all of you here. We have a few updates, and then we'll look forward to um, personally congratulating each of our honorees and their proud families and friends. Uh, last week, our LPS Education Foundation hosted uh, its annual luncheon. Uh, the luncheon proceeds uh, benefit the Competitive Edge College, college Savings Program, which is provided um, and offered to each of our incoming student kindergarten students each year. Um, this year we um, had our largest event with over 280 um, tickets sold and so we are so grateful um, to our foundation and to everyone who supported their efforts. Um, it was a pleasure to welcome Ron Fournier who is the publisher of Crane's Detroit Business uh, as our guest speaker and very soon the foundation will be surprising our newest grant recipients. Um, I know Mrs. Jenkins will be joining members of the foundation and myself, um, a la the large checks from Publishers Clearinghouse, um, <laughs> albeit not, maybe not in the same sum, um, but we will soon be um, visiting many schools um, and awarding the newest um, round of grant recipients. And to date, the foundation has, um, with this new ascent of uh, grants, will have awarded over $183,000 in grants uh, to our staff across the district. That is tremendous. And um, the foundation luncheon is just one way, um, in addition to the contributions of our LPS staff and the generous supporters in our community that we're able to do that. Um, our PACs, I know Mr. Quackenbush had a moment to recognize our performing arts centers at our high schools. As you know, Stevenson and Franklin PACs are both completed, and um, we have had the opportunity to have the sounds of beautiful music from triad concerts, school concerts, and collage concerts um, just fill those auditoriums. And the new band shells if, uh, have been installed, and it really just enhances the talents um, of our uh, vocal and um, instrumental performers and we invite our community to join us for a couple of special upcoming performances in addition to our uh, concerts and um, other performances we have Kappa presenting its first show of the school year cats will be performed um, Churchill will be temporarily in the Franklin Performing Arts Center while theirs is under construction so that will be performed December 7th 8th and 9th um, 7 p.m. each evening if you'd like to check out Kappa's new performance and also Stevenson will present its three-act play on the same dates the 7th 8th and 9th good thing there are three nights you can, you can make them both um, at 7 p.m. in the Stevenson PAC so we welcome you to join us to those um, we know our students and staff spend endless hours and weeks um, preparing for those special performances we want to congratulate our very own Franklin Patriots, who are the regional champs in football. They won an exciting and down-to-the-wire and cold game on Friday <laughs> night um, against Flushing. It was an awesome victory, and they now move on to the state semifinal game, which is a very significant accomplishment. Um, if you are interested in attending, it will be held in Grand Ledge this Saturday at 1 p.m., and they will be facing Grand Rapids Forest Hills Central. Um, so we welcome you to join us, um, but most, most importantly, we'd like to congratulate um, all of our athletes, uh, staff, and coaches. This weekend, our volunteer organization um, in the community, Blessings in a Backpack, you may have um, heard of that wonderful organization, um, who provide um, weekend food support to over 240 students every week. 
Um, they will be holding their annual fundraiser this Saturday. Um, they have a fun bowling fundraiser every year. It's at Mary Bowl from 2 to 4 on Saturday, November 18th. If you'd like to attend, it's a $20 donation, and they would love to have you there. They also have a wonderful silent auction. Finally, we'd like to congratulate um, two of our own colleagues at this table. We had two board members who recently completed their board member certification in record time. Our two newest <laughs> board trustees, uh, Mrs. Frank and Mrs. Bradford, um, along with actually every single member of our Board of Education attended the fall conference of the Michigan Association of School Boards. They were one of only six school boards across the entire state of Michigan who were all in attendance um, continuing their own professional development this past weekend. And so um, Mrs. Bradford and Mrs. Frank have now become certified board members. We will soon be formally uh, celebrating that, um, which will allow uh, this board to become an honor board as every single board member has taken time to become fully certified um, throughout their, their extended professional development. So we congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I just want to take a moment to congratulate our Teacher of the Year recipients, all such um, outstanding educators. We look forward to celebrating you throughout the year. Um, and again, to all of our staff and volunteers um, in honor of American Education Week. I can't think of a more perfect evening um, to celebrate that than this evening. Thank you, President Burton. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned, we will now be taking about a five to 10 minute recess. Uh, feel free to congratulate the honorees of the evening. We are now at recess.
Welcome to the continuation of the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education regular meeting of, two, of uh, November 13th, 2017. If you're following along with your agenda, we are now on item 3D, uh, written communications. Does any member of the board have written communications that they would like to share? Seeing none, we will go on to item 3E, audience communications. Uh, I do not have any blue slips. Are there any members? Oh, there we do have one member of the audience who would like to participate in audience communications this evening. Uh, just as by way of information, um, audience communication is designed to be a time that the board is uh, listening to members of the community on whatever topic on which they would like to address us. Uh, it is uh, a time that the board is going to be listening as opposed to a question and answer session. Uh, we do have a three-minute time limit on each speaker, and the reason that we have a time limit is so that we can be fair to everybody uh, who comes before the board to speak uh, and still take care of a lot of our business of the evening. Uh, Mr. Johnson has been uh, our long-standing timekeeper, uh, so uh, if you do hear uh, a little beep, yeah, we have just found that to be a little bit more polite way to let you know that it's time to wrap up some comments. Uh, also, if, uh, as you're approaching the podium, if you would uh, state your name and address. Uh, for the for the record, that would be appreciated. Uh, as I said, we do have one individual who would like to speak uh, this evening, and that is uh, Rachel Zuckerman. Rachel, good evening. Good evening. It really emptied out. <laughs> it tends to do that, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay. But there are people who care a lot who are still here. I trust <laughs> that. I trust that. So it's Rachel Zuckerman, and my address is 19721 Gary Lane, Livonia, Michigan, 48152. Welcome. I promise I'm staying really close to three, three minutes. It might be like three minutes and three seconds. OK, so good evening. Tonight, I want to speak to you all about an issue that I'm not sure is receiving enough attention in our Livonia community, and that is the opioid epidemic. I know we're all vaguely familiar with the fact that this is a national problem. On October 30th, President Trump declared the national opioid crisis a public health emergency. However, tonight, I want to bring attention to the fact that this issue is closer to home, and in fact, it's in our own backyards. Even as the daughter of a Livonia substance abuse counselor, I was unaware of how local this problem had become until I attended the community town hall meeting on heroin and opioids in Wayne County, hosted at Schoolcraft College on October 4th. So to contextualize the issue, I want to share a few key statistics. First, five Michigan residents die every day from opioid epidemics, according to the Michigan Attorney General, which was more than the number of people who died from traffic crashes or gun fatalities in 2015. Michigan was one of 19 states identified by the CDC as having a statistically significant increase in opioid-related deaths. Furthermore, in Wayne County, there were 817 opioid-related deaths in 2016, an increase of 61% over the previous year. And to bring it closest to home, there were 72 overdoses with police response in Livonia last year, according to the Livonia police officer who spoke at the town hall. At the event, one of the professionals reiterated that conversations with our young people need to start early in middle school, if not sooner. If you wait until high school, you're already too late. Addressing this crisis will require a holistic response that involves legal, medical, and educational interventions. Educating our young people must be part of the equation. I want to encourage LPS to consider adopting an educational program called Operation Prevention, created in partnership with the Drug Enforcement Agency and Discovery Education to teach K-12 students about the dangers of opioids. It's a no-cost program, it's credible, follows best practices, and adheres to educational guidelines. The program features elementary, middle, and high school classroom-ready lessons and companion guides for educators. It has a virtual field trip where students visit a community that has seen the effects of opioids, self-paced online modules, and parent resources. Two weeks ago, I met with Livonia Save Our Youth, an organization I was involved with as the president of Stevenson Students Against Destructive Decisions, and they are excited about the potential of this idea and are eager to offer their support. I certainly recognize there will be challenges with implementation. I know that curriculums are already jam-packed, and we will need to partner with teachers to assess the viability of integrating something like this into the classroom. But I'll conclude by reminding us that we are in a unique moment that deserves a unique response. And I hope my comments tonight will start a needed dialogue about how we pursue potentially life-saving solutions for our children. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. 
It's okay. I just have flyers about the program. If you could hey, give them to them. Mrs. Wozniak, she'll make certain that the whole board gets them. Thank you. Thank you. And Mrs. Oquist, could you check into that on behalf of the board? I certainly will. Thank you. <clears throat> I do not see anybody else who wishes to participate in audience communication. Is there anybody else? Seeing them, we will go on to the next item on our agenda, uh, item 3F, response to prior audience communications. Uh, at our last uh, general uh, meeting of the Board of Education, there were a couple of individuals who came forward with uh, specific questions about transportation for some of their students, and those were uh, each one of those folks has been reached out to on a personal basis and, and responded to. The next item on our agenda is our consent agenda. May I have a motion, please? President Burden. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the following consent agenda items as recommended by the superintendent. 5A, meetings of the regular meeting, minutes? pardon me, minutes of the regular meeting of October 16th, 2017. 5B, minutes of the special meeting of November 6, 2017. Support. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Center, supported by several. I believe Mrs. Bonfield was the first one that I heard. Are there any questions or comments on the items of this consent agenda? No. Seeing none, uh, we have a motion by Mr. Centers, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Uh, Mr. Centers, would you please take the, uh, the roll? Mr. Centers says yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Frank? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Ms. Mr. Johnson? Yes. President Burden? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item six, business matters. And item 6A is the approval of foresight design for Churchill High School athletic field. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bonifield. Move that the Livonia Public Schools School District Board of Education approve the recommendation of the owner's representative, Plant Moran Cressa, to award the contract for design work of Churchill High School athletic field replacement to foresight design Berkeley, Michigan, for a total cost of $54,000 and authorize the superintendent or her designee to negotiate and execute final contract. Support. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mrs. Mrs. Mr. Centers. There, been, there were several, but uh, let me see here. Mr. Francis, would you like to address this item for the board? Yes, good evening, President Burton. Um, I want to give first a, a uh, brief overview of the district's plans with regard to athletic fields because uh, while this evening's motion is specifically to engage foresight design in um, designing the Churchill High School uh, athletic fields and track, et cetera, um, uh, resurfacing and uh, uh, up, upgrading or updating, I should say. I want to give a, a brief overview simply because uh, word is kind of out that, uh, that that we're doing this, and I, I want to make sure that we're explaining uh, to the general public that we're not intending to only do Churchill High School, but rather we do have a two-year or I should say a two-summer plan with regard to all three high schools. So if you'd indulge me for a moment, I want to give a, a brief overview. First of all, with regard to foresight, um, I do want to state that um, we intend to create a contract uh, with the board's approval this evening of, of uh, this motion to do a one-year contract with Foresight for design work with a one-year option uh, on our part to extend the same uh, fee to do the Franklin and Stevenson design into the summer of 19. Having said that, uh, we do uh, want to do the scope, generally speaking, with regard to the three high schools of the football slash soccer field resurfacing as, as we know we currently do have an athletic field i.e. turf field at the three high schools and uh, it is time to have that resurfaced while we had last school year a GMAX test as they call it with regard to the the surface uh, viability of the the um, safety of the field and it does fall in the range that is an acceptable GMAX uh, rating it is time to have them re 
replaced. Um, we, we have uh, two summers to do them in, and in that time, that is an acceptable amount of time to ensure that we get a new field on there for the safety of the athletes and the players on there. Along with the football field, it is our intention to include in the scope a resurfacing of the track around the football slash soccer field, as well as addressing the softball and baseball fields. Um, currently, our baseball fields of the high schools are, are also field turf, and uh, softball fields are grass. And we were looking to, um, within the design, ask Foresight to include the infield for the baseball, as well as um, uh, upgrades, or I should say updates, to the softball field, but not being field turf. And, and that's mostly because softball doesn't actually like to use turf in the, in the field of play. It, it, it sort of changes the the game a little bit, so they stick to, to natural grass. Uh, there may be some other incidentals in there. When I mean by incidentals in the scope, uh, there could be asphalt work, fence work, um, railings, etc. But all of that will fall into the um, design work by Foresight that we're asking for this evening and be based upon the budget that the, that the district has and will be using the sinking fund for this project. With that, um, I'm happy to take any questions if the board may have them. Are there questions or comments from the superintendent or members of the board? Mrs. Oquist? Thank you, Mr. Francis. I think that background is, is helpful for us. And, um, and uh, just to mention, we are just in the beginning stages of the process. So um, as that conversation starts, we want folks to know that uh, um, our, our cabinet team members who are involved in this, um, as well as myself, um, we will be not only working with um, Foresight and Plant Maria and Cressa, but certainly with our athletic directors, um, our, our administrators, our coaches, et cetera, um, to garner feedback um, on the design um, and the necessary upgrades. And those uh, conversations uh, we, will, we will be presenting to the board in study sessions and in committee meetings. And so folks who are interested can certainly follow along. Um, but we'll begin with Churchill next summer and then Stevenson and Franklin the summer after. Uh, we are excited about these um, these updates. But again, our, our, we are just in the very uh, early stages of the planning process. Any other comments or questions from members of the board? Uh, one question that I have been asked uh, by a few members of our community is is why we are doing turf as opposed to uh, natural grass. Um, and we discussed this in the Committee of the Whole, but for those who may not have been tuning in then, uh, it's both a, a safety issue uh, with our athletes as well as uh, allowing as far that field to be used uh, time after time after time without being torn up. If it was a, a natural grass field, we would be far more limited with the number of teams, uh, the number of students that we can get on that field. Uh, right now we can have one team after the other go right out on it and, and basically serve our students better and, and in a safer manner. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Centers. Mr. Centers, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Center says yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Frank? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. President Burden? Yes. Motion passes. The next item on our agenda is item 6B, approval of bid results for secondary science equipment 2013 bond. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Johnson. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the purchase of secondary science equipment for a total cost of $218,086.86 from the following vendors in the amounts specified. Fisher Scientific, $20,201.88. Parco Scientific, $12,960. Pasco Scientific, $5,370.48. School Specialty, Frey Scientific, $165,828.60 and VWR Wards Science, $13,725.90. Support. We have many. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Uh, let me see here. Mr. Francis, would you please address this item for the board? Sure, thank you. Uh, this is uh, the second of two.
two rounds of secondary science equipment purchases. Just to back up, when we did the first one last spring, we put out to bid all the items. These are the items that we're getting in this round were not uh, did not receive good bid coverage in the first go around, or alternate bids of items that we did not ask for were, were bid on by companies. Uh, we we purchased the majority of the science equipment that came from the committee of middle and high school science teachers that was created. Uh, their recommendations of prioritized science equipment was put out last spring. Again, the items that we did not get good bid coverage on, we've brought back for this recommendation of science uh, materials and equipment. I shouldn't say materials, but equipment. So uh, this is a recommended purchase out of the bond, 2013 bond, for the recommended required uh, items for both middle and high school sciences. Thank you. You're Other welcome. questions or comments by members of the board or the superintendent? Mrs. Uh, Bonifield. Um, I would like to thank um, Mr. Francis for including the um, additional information that we requested in our packet this week. It was extremely helpful. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And, and I thank Mr. Ben Hillard, the, the science coordinator for the district, who, who really did the, the legwork on pulling that information together. I just got to tag my name to the memo. So th thank, thank you, Mr. Hillard. Thank you. <clears throat> Other comments? Mr. Centers. Uh, if, for those of people who are watching but uh, may not know exactly what this equipment is, this is long-term use equipment, yes. microscopes. Uh, I see weights and scales and uh, things that uh, can be used for a long time that will help our science students for many years. Correct. And that's also why, as, as Mr. Hillard had pointed out, we, we went with perhaps uh, in some cases a more expensive item but because it was a better built and longer lasting item versus a less expensive item Great. thank you you're welcome other comments from other board members or questions uh, it has been stated but I'd just like to, to reiterate uh, for the public that this that this equipment is coming out of the bond money and if you were tuned in earlier uh, you heard a very uh, heartfelt thank you from Mr. Quackenbush, uh, one of our uh, Teachers of the Year, thanking our community for the support of the bond and what it means in the individual classroom. And in his classrooms, it was with musical instruments. And here, our science teachers are benefiting from the same, uh, the same kind of support in equipment that's been much needed in their classrooms. So thank you to our community for this item, or this, these items. Any other comments or questions? We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Mr. Sanders, would you please take the roll? Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mr. Center says yes. President Burnham. Yes. Motion passes. The next item on our agenda is item 6C, approval to purchase secondary furniture, 2013 bond. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Frank. Move that the Board of Education of Livonia Public Schools School District approve the purchase of two-person desks, stand-up desks, and student chairs with arms from Staples Business Advantage in Livonia, Michigan for a cost of $202,571.60 and four leg, four leg student chairs from Interior Environments in Novi, Michigan for a cost of $103,444.64 for a total cost of $306,016.24. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Frank, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Mr. Francis. Thank you. Uh, this is a planned purchase from the 2013 bond. As we've done, as the bond has supported in the past, we've made several rounds of furniture pur purchases for elementary as well as secondary schools. Uh, this is another purchase for secondary furniture. Uh, we have two-person tables, which is an item that we've planned to purchase. Um, previously, we, we did order and purchase with the board's approval uh, the single desks and also uh, stand-up desks actually for elementary. So in this instance, we have our two-person desks that will be replacing um, desks in the three high schools and the three middle schools, as well as uh, the Garfield Community School, the Western Wayne Skill Center program that will be moving into there. We have more student chairs. These are the same chairs that we've purchased in the past, just 
each building has their own colors. And then the chairs with arms are actually a, a more unique item for the Western Wayne Skill Center program at Garfield Community School for students that may need a little more support with regard to sitting and standing back up again. So we did have some of those and we're actually getting some stand-up desks into the Skill Center program as well. So that covers um, the items in this purchase and uh, we recommend the board uh, approve for the, uh, again, out of the bond for the secondary furniture. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments or questions from the superintendent or the board? As you can see, if you're watching from right now, these are a, a string of items that we've had a great, uh, great deal of discussion on uh, in previous meetings. So we may be clipping through a few of these on a quicker basis. Uh, we have a motion right now by Mrs. Frank, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Mr. Sanders, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Center says yes. President Burden. Yes. Motion passes. The next item on our agenda is item 6D, approval of bid results for interior doors 2013 bond. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. This is bon uh, Mrs. Mrs. Bradford. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the purchase of eight interior doors from Rayhaven Group, Livonia, Michigan, for a cost of $23,225. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mr. Francis. Thank you. Uh, these are interior doors, as we've discussed in the past, uh, at mostly at Frost Middle School. They have six that are going there. And we have one at Cooper and one at Roosevelt. These are all uh, being supported through the 2013 bond and actually items that uh, we, we just did not replace at the time uh, during during that uh, first phase at specifically at frost uh, we're talking about a couple of uh, gym doors we're talking about the, the interior doors for the cafeteria which are still the original doors so we decided to, to go back in and replace them as we did in other buildings as we were renovating thank you you're welcome are there comments or questions from the superintendent or the board Seeing them, we have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mr. Johnson. Mr. Sanders, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Sanders says yes. President Burden. Yes. The motion passes. The next item on our agenda is item 6E, approval of bid results for clay demolition. May I have a motion, please? President Burden. Mrs. Jarvis. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District Approve the recommendation of the district's director of operations, Philip Francis, to award the contract for the demolition of Clay School to Salon Bean Trucking and Excavating Incorporated, Dundee, Michigan, for a total cost of $440,000, and authorize the superintendent or her designee to negotiate and execute final contracts. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mrs. Frank. Mr. Francis. Thank you. Um, as the district uh, board knows, and as sure much of the community knows, the board has entered into an agreement to purchase this property at Clay. Pardon? Oh, to sell. Did I say purchase? Yes. It's a bit. It's habit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to, to agreement to purchase to sell this this property uh, at Clay and under the terms of that agreement the the um, district is responsible for the demolition of uh, the structure that is currently there as well as peeling up the asphalt parking lot that is currently located there we actually had very good bid coverage with 13 uh, uh, companies that had put in for bid some did not completely fill out the paperwork and were disqualified and we were recommending um, Salem Bean Trucking and Excavating at $448,000. Just to clarify, while it was not the lowest dollar amount bid, it is the lowest responsible bid, we did do due diligence by interviewing the firms as well as doing reference checks. And um, NTH is our engineering consulting firm. They assisted uh, between the interviews, the reference checks, and history that either LPS itself has had or NTH has had working with other districts. Um, we did land on the responsible bidder of Salem Bean Trucking. Thank you. Are there questions or comments by the superintendent of the board? 
Uh, Mrs. Soquist. Thank you, President Burton. Um, I just wanted to mention just uh, tangentially to this item. Um, as you know, uh, in September, the board voted um, to enter into purchase agreements with Infinity Homes um, to purchase not only uh, the clay property, but additional properties. Um, and so I thought I would just uh, mention a quick update to our community. Um, as part of that process, we hold community meetings um, for neighbors within that, uh, surrounding those properties um, that we have, um, and on which we have entered a purchase agreement. Um, we held community meetings at the end of October and the beginning of November. Um, at those meetings, we, um, which were very, very well attended, um, we were pleased to welcome many members of the community. And a number of the questions um, that we received from the community um, were regarding the next steps in the process. So um, the site plans, the development of the land, et cetera, which really fall under the purview of um, the city of Livonia or the city of Westland, depending on um, where that parcel of land is located. So in order to assist the community, um, we encourage them to not only follow the city of Livonia and city of Westland websites and notices placed in the observer, uh, Mrs. Jenkins has also added a uh, special item under the community tab. It is the first item under the community tab where um, we will continue to update information with regard to uh, meetings or information related to um, the planning commission for the cities um, and when they begin to go through, uh, when the developer will begin to go through the site plan approval process. So if uh, any member of the community is interested in looking for more information, um, we have provided an update um, under that tab um, and we will continue to update it, although we do encourage um, our community members to also be checking the city of Livonia and the city of Westland as they are really uh, moving on through the next steps in the process. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, President Burden. Uh, Mr. Francis, for the uh, benefit of the community uh, in, and to sort of dovetail on Mrs. Oquist in terms of a time frame, when would we expect the demolition to begin and do you have any idea how long it will take to complete? Well, we would expect it to begin probably in um, into December, maybe at the at the turn of uh, the, the new year. But we're hopeful in December, and it takes several months. The abatement process is going to take some time. We do ensure that the building is raised safely, meaning environmentally, but as well as securing the construction area. So it's it's not a speedy process, but it it is. Um, a process that has safeguards in it. So again, based upon the amount and how long it takes to abate the building, that will occur, and then the actual process of demolition will occur. We could probably safely assume, um, and, and not taking even frost laws into consideration, but just, just working through, we could safely assume a four month potential period there. And, and if they're delayed through any frost law issues, then that, that would maybe slow it down a little bit as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Centers, do you have a question? Uh, Mark and I were on the same way, wavelength okay. there. Yeah. All righty. Any other questions or comments from the board? Mrs. Jarvis. I heard a rumor that there may be a time capsule at Clay. So in the course of the um, deconstruction of the building, let's see, uh, you know, this would be really exciting. So we'll keep our eyes open. Okay. If you have any other further information about where that might be or, or who might have knowledge, if you could pass that on to... And this if our Oakley's. community has any helpful hints, that would be great, too. That's <laughs> fabulous. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? All righty. Uh, I've got one question. Mr. Francis, am I remembering correctly that they're going to be removed at, at uh, Infinity's request, they're only going to be removing part of that parking lot in order for a re the remainder of the parking lot to be able to be utilized by the uh, construction equipment that they're the, going to be the needing? Top, the top layer of the asphalt will come up. The... the um, uh, base will remain and they'll, they'll probably use that for their heavy equipment. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Just in case there's any question by the community. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we have a mo motion by Mrs. Jarvis supported by uh, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Senators, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Senator says yes. President Burden. Yes. And the motion passes. The next item on our agenda is item 7, personnel matters, and 7A is teachers for approval. May I have a motion, please? <clears throat> President Burden. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education's Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent and offer employment for the 2017-2018 
school year to the teachers listed on the attached document. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Center, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Uh, here is Mr. Archibald or Mr. Uh, McDonald? Mr. Mr. McDonald? Yep. Thank you, you, President Burton. You're very welcome. Uh, the individuals that we are presenting to the board this evening are qualified to fill the positions that, and they have been fully vetted. Uh, through our extensive interview process that we conducted, we are very confident that these teachers will perform at a high level and uh, in a manner that is consistent with our shared vision and collective commitments. Uh, the positions have each been included in the 1718 budget and are in an area of need. And we are pleased to be recommending such a talented group of individuals and are excited to get them in front of our students. Thank you. Are there questions or comments from the superintendent or the board? Welcome aboard. Yes, welcome to Livonia Public Schools. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Centers, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Mr. Centers, would you please take the roll? Mr. Centers says yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Frank? <coughs> yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. President Burden? Yes. Motion passes. The next item on our agenda is item 7B, leave of absence. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bonifield. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the request for a leave of absence as listed below. Diane Gallup, 2017-2018 school year. Support. We have a motion by, Mr. by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Centers. Uh, Mr. McDonald. Thank you. Uh, you have before you the name of one employee who is requesting a leave for the remainder of the 17-18 school year, and this request is in accordance with the collective bargaining agreement, uh, and I ask that you consider this request. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments by the superintendent or the board? So, seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Centers. Mr. Centers, would you please take the roll? Mr. S Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Centers says yes. Uh, Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Frank? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. President Burden? Yes. Motion passes. The next item on our agenda is item 7C, resignation. And um, uh, that, that's, that is an item for uh, information purposes only. It's not an item on which the board needs to vote. Let me see here. The next item on our agenda is item 7D, retirements. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Johnson. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the attached resolutions of appreciation for the services rendered by Deborah Corbeil, Craig Schmidt, and Dorothy Wiedewilt. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Bradford. Mr. McDonald. Thank you, President Burton. Uh, tonight we're very pleased to bring before you three employees who will be retiring. Uh, as these employees leave the Livonia Public Schools, they take with them a combined total of 57.1 years of experience. Uh, on behalf of the administration, I would like to thank these employees for their dedicated years of service that they have provided the students of the Livonia Public Schools, and I ask the board adopts the attached uh, resolution of appreciation for them. Thank you. Are there any comments uh, or questions by the superintendent or the board? Congratulations. Well. Yeah, congratulations. Yes, a round of congratulations Thank and thanks. Thank you. Occasionally, we, uh, as individual board members, we come upon an, uh, a, a person on the retiring list who we know personally. Mm -hmm. uh, and my, uh, on behalf of my family, we would like to wish an especially happy retirement to Craig Schmidt. Uh, Craig has been our building supervisor uh, since my first child was in elementary school all the way through. So a uh, very special person to our family, and we wish all three of our retirees very well. Uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Dur Johnson, supported by uh, Mrs. Bradford. Mr. Senator, would you please take the roll? Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Senator says yes. President Burden. Yes. Motion passes. The next item on our agenda is item 8, hearing from board members, and 8A is a resolution supporting the work of the School Finance Research Collaborative. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Frank. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the attached resolution supporting the work of the School Finance Research Collaborative and requesting that no changes to current school funding be made until the work of the School Finance Collaborative is complete. Support. Support. 
We have a motion by Mrs. Frank, supported by Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mrs. Oquist, would you like to address this? And after, we, after your comments, I would like uh, Mrs. Frank, if you could read the resolution. Thank you. I, I, would, be, I would be pleased to. Um, as you know, one of the items um, just certainly of utmost importance to um, our school board um, and, and certainly our administration as we make recommendations to you um, is regarding school funding. Currently, um, there is legislation um, pending in Lansing regarding um, a school funding issue that would impact um, our school district and any school district that has um, passed or would pass in the future um, a millage for their ISD, their intermediate school district. Um, we refer to that here as our Wayne County Enhancement Millage. Um, we have shared information at prior meetings um, on this legislation. Um, but importantly, um, one of the things that we've encouraged is that there, um, that the legislature pause at this point to allow the school funding collaborative to complete um, the very important work in which they're involved so that we have a clear and thorough picture of um, what adequate funding is needed to educate the children in the state of Michigan. As you will um, hear as uh, Trustee Frank reads the resolution, um, certainly there's great work to be done um, in the state of Michigan with regard to educating our students, and we are fully committed to that work each and every day. We also ask that the legislature partner with us in that commitment and that we hold on any changes um, to legislation related to school funding until this funding collaborative has been allowed to complete their work. I'd like to just share a little bit of information about the collaborative. The School Finance Research Collaborative is a diverse group of business leaders and education experts from Metro Detroit to the UP who agree it's time to change the way Michigan schools are funded. The collaborative is bringing together top industry experts to re-examine our approach to school funding so that we can fully prepare all students for jobs and success. The collaborative has hired contractors to provide the most comprehensive and accurate analysis of school financing in Michigan to date, with the results expected to be released by early 2018. This report will build on the findings of the state-funded Michigan Education Finance Study. We have referred to it here as the Adequacy Study, um, which was released in June of 2016. So before any substantive changes are made to any aspect of school funding in Michigan, we are asking our legislators to wait and review the findings of this extensive and in-depth study. We have been pleased to have um, Dr. Jennifer Terriel and Mr. Russ Keberly uh, both participate um, as members of our school community and give input to the School Finance Research Collaborative, as have many, many educators, administrators, parents, business leaders, community members, um, and university leaders as well um, to provide input um, to this comprehensive study. And I know you'll, you'll receive even more information as uh, Mrs. Frank reads the resolution. We would support the board uh, passing this resolution. We will then share this um, with the governor and our legislators in um, both the House and the Senate. And again, encourage them to hold on any legislation related to changes to school funding until the collaborative has completed their work. Thank you. You're welcome. Mrs. Frank, this is a little bit lengthy, but it is so important that we do want the public to be fully aware. Whereas the Michigan Constitution states that the legislature shall maintain and support a system of free public elementary and secondary schools as defined by law, and whereas Michigan ranks 32nd in student achievement nationwide according to recent research, and whereas the Governor's 21st Century Education Commission states that the urgency could not be greater regarding the failing K-12 performance, further stating that the Michigan students underperform their peers, ranking 41st on fourth grade reading performance nationally. And whereas the Commission further states that Michigan needs to efficiently distribute resources to public schools and efficient distribution requires a transparent calculation of what it costs to meet performance standards, that students with greater educational needs should be provided with additional resources where needed to have an equal chance of meeting the performance standards. And whereas in 2016, the state of Michigan conducted a comprehensive statewide cost study, adequacy study, 
that produced and provided valuable information but used only one methodology and did not fully examine special educational cost due to data availability issues, did not examine preschool, charter school, uh, career and technical education, the impact of high concentrations of special needs students, and the cost challenges faced by geographically isolated schools and or very small school districts. And whereas, the way we fund Michigan's public schools is fundamentally broken. And that Michigan needs to develop funding formulas that efficiently and effectively distrib distribute these resources to the proper entities to support student, ex student success. And whereas, we must re-examine our approach so all students, regardless of their circumstances, can achieve and succeed. And whereas the School Finance Research Collaborative is a broad-based, diverse, and bipartisan group of business leaders and education experts from Metro, De Metro Detroit to the UP working together to determine the cost of student achievement for all PK 12 through 12 um, and make recommendations to change how our schools are funded. And whereas the School Finance Research Collaborative is supporting Michigan's first comprehensive school adequacy study using multiple metho methodologies to determine the cost of educating a student. And whereas the School Finance Re Research Collaborative has hired the nation's top two school finance research firms to, eg to examine cost issues associated with key factors, including preschool, poverty, special education, career and technical education, English language learners, at-risk learners and schools that are geographically isolated. And whereas adequacy studies have been performed in more than 30 other states over the past 15 years, with over 90% of these studies using multiple methodologies as step one in considering any comprehensive school reform. And whereas the School Finance Research Collaborative adequacy study is expected to be completed in early 2018 and will provide lawmakers and the public with the best most accurate and most reliable information on what it truly costs to educate all Michigan students. And whereas any changes to the current legislation related to school funding should take into consideration these recommendations. Therefore, be it resolved, the Livonia Public Schools School District supports the School Finance Research Collaborative and its efforts to determine the true cost of educating all Michigan public school students PK through 12. Thank you. Are there comments or questions from the superintendent or the board? President Burton? Yes, Mrs. Frank. When I was at um, Michigan um, Association of S School Boards this weekend, I attended a class on um, the 21st century, um, the, the governor's 21st century education commission, and it was so insightful about the issues that are facing Michigan and funding, just like Mrs. Oquist said, what we have going on, we really need to refocus how we are funding public schools. And it was so informative, and this is such a timely um, 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 resolution. So thank you, Mrs. Oquist, for leading the way and providing this for us as a school board to support. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions by members of the board? I'm, I'm certainly proud to have our board um, adopt this resolution. We will, um, uh, we will send it uh, along again to our legislators and um, encourage their thoughtful consideration of this, this very complex issue. Um, there is no more precious commodity um, than the children entrusted to us throughout the state of Michigan. Um, tonight we celebrated American Education Week, and again, um, you know, the basis of, of our society, the great equalizer, is the public education we are able to provide um, the children entrusted to us. And so um, we are eager to partner um, with uh, the Michigan Department of Education, our state legislators, um, as we look at this very complex issue. And again, um, I appreciate the board's willingness to adopt this resolution um, and so we can take, again, a very thorough look at this complex, uh, complex issue. Thank you. Any other comments by the board? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Frank, supported by Mr. Johnson. Mr. Senators, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Frank? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Ms. Mr. Johnson? Sorry. <laughs> President Burden says? Yes. There you go. <laughs> it's late. It is, it has been a long evening. Uh, thank you. The motion does pass. Uh, and Mrs. Oquist, you will be sending this to our legislators on behalf of the district and the board. I will. Thank you so much.
And thank you very much for, for your assistance in assembling all the information. The next item on our agenda is item 8B, first reading of board policies. Uh, uh, this is first reading of board policies, DJD, expense reimbursement, IDB, health education, IDFB, intramural activities, removal of this policy, JQE, pregnant students. This is the first reading of this policy. It does not require a motion, and it will not be voted upon this evening. Uh, uh, changes to our board policy or removal of any board policy require two readings. First reading is this evening, and the second reading will be at our next uh, general meeting in the month of December, upon which we will take a vote at that time. Are there any questions uh, or comments from board members on any of these policies at this time? And uh, as far for the benefit of the public, uh, these are minor changes. Uh, in some times, in some uh, times, grammatical changes, uh, or just making sure that the practice that we have uh, reflect is reflected in our policy. Uh, the one policy that is uh, being examined for removal intramural activities is simply because we do not have uh, activities under which we title them intramural activities any longer. We have clubs, we have sports, we have teams. Uh, but we have varsity athletics, but we don't have intramural activities, so that's being omitted at this time. The next item on our agenda is item 8C, second reading of board policies. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bradford. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the policy committee and adopt board policy language per the attached documents for... Policy A, B, C, C, Board Member Term of Office. Policy A, F, C, Emergency Closings of Schools. Policy B, G, A, Membership and Associations. Policy D, F, G, Fees, Payments and Rentals. Policy E, B, H, Leasing and Renting. Policy K, G, Community Use of School Facilities. Policy KI, Material Distribution in Schools. Policy KM, Visits to Schools. Policy KN, Public Complaints. Policy LDAJA, Security Footage. Policy MK, Accreditation. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mrs. Oquist, would you like to address this group? <laughs> Without, we don't need to go into detail on each one, right. but oh, okay. yes. Um, initially, the board policy committee had taken a look at uh, many of these policies, again, as President Burton mentioned, um, for either minor updates with regard to language to either reflect current law um, or current practice. Um, none, none of the changes that have been recommended this evening changed. Uh, the intent of the initial language, but rather um, either clean up uh, legal references um, or language within these policies. This will be part of a continuing effort um, over the course of a number of months. Uh, we have over 600 pages of board policy, so uh, you can look forward to more in the future. Uh, we will continue to update, update these um, as uh, part of the board's um, regular work. They take this responsibility very seriously and um, take a thorough look at these policies. Some um, are more related to day-to-day -day operations and some are more related to board operations. In any case, they're reviewed by district administration as well as the board at both study sessions and committee meetings and then uh, come forward for two readings. So these policies have already been discussed again um, at, at three prior meetings and are uh, ready this evening to move forward with uh, the indulgence of the board. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there questions or comments on any of the policies that are listed in this motion? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mr. Johnson. Mr. Sanders, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Senator says yes. President Burden. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, I would like to thank our administrative team uh, for a significant amount of work. Uh, policy is, as Mrs. Oka said, as literally is over 600-page document, uh, but it is important that it be kept current. 
um, this board a couple of years ago began that in earnest. Uh, and at a certain point, we need to turn some, some of these over to the administration uh, for further work before they can come back to the board. So uh, you have our sincere thanks, uh, in, in addition to running the day-to-day -day operations of the district, taking a look at some of these that, that uh, needed some administrative work before they came back. So thank you. At this point uh, on our agenda, we are at item 8D, hearing from board members. Uh, as has been the custom of this board, uh, rather than having seven of us repeat many of the same thanks and, and uh, notations of the evening, uh, we designate one board member to take care of that for uh, on behalf of the board. By all means, if there are other board members who would like to add anything, uh, you're more, more than welcome. Uh, this evening, Mr. Centers will be taking care of hearing from board members for us. Uh, before the meeting started, several of us were saying that this is one of our favorite meetings because uh, the stories we get to hear about our teachers and the students and uh, just the recognition is a, a really special night. So uh, congratulations to our honorees, the Teacher of the Years. Uh, this is Education Week, so I was honored to re read the resolution. Uh, honoring those who work really hard to advance kids and uh, we know that the future, as we stated, uh, is our children and it's really important to support them in their education. So thank you everyone uh, who works in education for all that you do. Uh, this week we attended, I think all of us attended the Education Foundation lunch. Uh, we had a great speaker and it was a very large crowd. Uh, it's really great to see the community uh, come out and support the district. Uh, it's, we're gonna do it again next year. So uh, if you haven't gone yet, please, please do attend. Franklin, I think this is the uh, second time in three years they've made the semifinals. Is that correct? It is. Yeah. That's incredibly impressive. Uh, so the coaching staff, the, the athletes, congratulations to them as well. Uh, I and several of us have attended the Blessings uh, bowling event, which is a lot of fun. It's very uh, laid back and enjoyable. So. If you have not had the opportunity to, opportunity to attend, I encourage you to do so. Uh, thank you to my fellow board members for attending the conference. I think all of us uh, gain a lot of knowledge and perspective that, that we could share with each other and bring to the job. Uh, most uh, importantly though, thank you Karen and Crystal for uh, getting your certification. I, I think all the classes and, certi and different levels you can achieve are important. But that first one I think is probably the most important because it gives you the foundation you need to be a good board member. Uh, there we had city elections this week, so uh, a lot of familiar faces, uh, again, being in office, but we've got very good relations with the city and uh, we hope to continue that. Uh, finally, I want to uh, just acknowledge that we uh, have a lot of exciting, exciting things happening in the district from our furniture to the new athletic fields that will be coming. Uh, we're seeing a lot of change in the district with the bond, but again, there's gonna be a lot of, uh, a lot of exciting things happening for students that will be uh, really great that we approved this evening. That's all I got. Thank you very much. Are there comments uh, from other members, members of the board? Mrs. Jarvis. Thank you, President Burton. I would like to commend the Livonia Warriors who competed in some postseason, preseason play this past weekend at an all-girls competition in Bloomfield Hills. The Lady Warriors were honored as finalists in the competition, um, showing that our Livonia Warriors team is uh, still a team to be reckoned with. So congratulations to the Warriors and especially to the Lady Warriors. Thank you. Other comments or questions from, or comments from members of the board? Seeing none, we're going to go to the next item on our agenda. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 9, recess to closed session to consider written legal opinion from council. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bonfield. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District recess to closed session for consideration of written legal opinion from council. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bonfield, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Uh, see here. Mrs. Oak, is, is there anything you need to address with this? Okay. Uh, Mr. Centers, would you please take a roll? Oh, I'm sorry. Mrs. Bonifield, did you um, have a comment? 
Usually, if we're at the end of the meeting, we let the. I will. Okay. Make it, yep, I will. Thank you. Harry. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make sure that this passes yes. first. Okay. Um, Mr. Centers, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Center says yes. President Burden. Yes. The motion passes. Uh, the board will be going into closed session at this time uh, for the stated reason. Uh, I do not know the length of the closed session that we will be in. However, we will be coming back out into open session to vote on the last remaining item on our agenda this evening. Um, we will be coming uh, back uh, on, to, on televised uh, recorded portion of our meeting at that time but again I don't know how long that's going to take uh, at this point we are at recess thank you
Welcome to the continuation of the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education General Meeting of November 13th, 2017. The next item on our agenda is item 10, separation agreement. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Johnson. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the separation agreement between the Livonia Public Schools School District, Livonia Education Association, LEA, and Jeffrey Marquardt. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mr. Centers. Uh, are there any questions on this item? Seeing none, Mr. Centers, would you please take the roll? Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Centers says yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. President Burden. Yes. Motion passes. We have come to the end of our agenda for the evening. I wish you all a very nice evening. We are now adjourned. Good night. <laughs>